and I'm just going to kind of dumb this down. Now you're going to see on my block out here, if I go into solo mode, it kind of has a knob or a rounded part from that cylinder. So we can go ahead and add that. We don't have to necessarily make an insert mesh brush for that, although you certainly could. I'm just going to modify this subtool here to go ahead and have that. And I'm going to have it as a separate piece just in case it's like one of those old Reeboks. You can go down and kind of like pump your shoe up with a little air hose. Like tss, tss, tss. you can go and pump that. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep that separate. So if I have it as a separate material later on, it'll be a little bit more functional. Now I'm not saying that's what it was, but in case that's the direction you want to go in. So I'm going to position that in there. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that piece off, go into polyframe mode, go into solo mode. And now what I'm going to do is I want to take this cylinder here and turn it into kind of a domed edge or a domed face here that's separate. So one way to do that is to isolate this middle section as a different polygroup. One easy way to do that is go down to your polygroup menu and choose group by normals. The max angle at 45 is probably fine, so just hit that and it'll turn all of those angle thresholds into a different polygroup. Now, when you go, it doesn't do it across the x-axis, so what you're going to want to do is again go into Geometry Modified Topology, do a mirror and weld across the x-axis to make sure you have the same polygroups on both sides. Hold down Control Shift, isolate that middle polygroup, and then do a quick Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden. Go into your Z Modeler brush, hover over a face, Q Mesh, Polygroup All, and just pull that back. Now you're going to notice it looks a little bit weird. That's because if you go down all the way to the bottom of here, under Display Properties, um, if you turn Double on, it's going to look fine, but these normals are flipped, they're inverted. So just click Flip, and now both sides are fine. Go out of solo mode, and basically what you're going to see is we just made a cylinder based on this inner ring here from our original subtool. So now what I want to do, go back into solo mode, hold down Control Shift and tap that top poly group, so now that's isolated. Control Shift drag to invert that selection, and that was with my select rectangle brush. If you need to select that, hold down Control Shift and go grab it. And now that top part is gone. Now I'm going to do a quick geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, and that's just going to use my custom menu here. Now I'm going to go back into my Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, and we're going to do close convex hole, and we'll just keep the defaults for the rest of the stuff. That's fine. So I'm going to tap on that edge, click and drag, and when I drag left and right, it's going to make it more or less arched, and if I click up and down, it's going to add resolution. So we can go ahead and add that dome that I was talking about for the original there. And also in the original I had this middle part kind of pushed back in, so we can go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to go kind of get close to my object here. I'm going to hold down, I'll hover over face, and I'm going to hold down Alt and just drag and paint all of these faces here to be white. And it's saying that um, it's uh, canceling it because we have non-symmetrical operation. Just to make sure these things are symmetrical, I'm going to do another quick mirror and weld. And now it's behaving a little bit more nicely. Uh, so now what I can do, now that I've marked those all as white, I can go in here, hover over face, and do Q Mesh Polygroup All, and that'll treat that all those white polygons as one polygroup. Actually, it also treats them as a single poly, so if you do Q Mesh Single Poly, it'll treat all of those white ones as a single poly. So you can kind of go ahead and push that in. Now we're going to go ahead, and if we do a Crease Polygroup now, which again is under your Geometry Crease menu, Crease menu right here, I have it all um, right here in my custom menu. If I do a crease PG, which is crease polygroup, it's actually going to, if I hit D to do that dynamic preview, it's going to crease all of these polygroups as well. Not really what I want. I'm going to do another one with that crease tolerance here in your crease menu. I'm going to crank that down to like 55, hit crease, then go into dynamic, and it, go has, it does the crease by angle, which is a little bit more of the look I'm going for. So I can go out of solo mode here, alt tap this one, hit D to, to um, dynamic preview that one, and now we've got those insert mesh brushes here for my ankles. So now let's go ahead and do the insert mesh brushes for these buckles. Now these are placeholder. We're going to end up actually using uh, B, I, tap those two keys, and then if you go to insert mesh clothing, I really end up using these insert mesh brushes here. But just as placeholder, what I did was go out of edit mode, control N to clear my canvas. Let's go ahead and grab, it doesn't really matter, let's grab that star I guess, drag that out. And instead of using, uh, it's like, well, why didn't you use the uh, Cube 3D primitive? That's because it's got polarized ends. Really don't want to have to deal with that. So again, what I'm going to do is, you know, you can grab any subtool. Hell, you can even grab the Cube 3D if you want to primitive. Go ahead and hit Make Poly Mesh 3D because we're not going to initialize anything as a primitive, but we are going to initialize it as a poly mesh 
by hitting Q cube. I'm going to drop this resolution down to 1 for each one of these. And that'll give me a Z mesh, Z remesh cube. So now what I can do is go to my Z modeler brush, hover over a face, and just like we did earlier, we're going to go to inset a single poly, each poly. Now if we do region on a single poly, it might not work, so I'm just going to do into each poly because it's only one. Let's inset this one here, and I'm going to I'm just going to tap that one. It's going to keep my inset settings the exact same. I'm going to hover over a face, choose Q mesh a single poly, take that and just pull it straight back. I'm going to go to this side here. You're going to see it actually filled these edges when I Q-mesh it. It's one of the features of the Q-mesh brush. If you want more information on that, check out my Z Modeler brush on my YouTube channel. Now I undid that so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm going to hit W, tap to find that surface normal, hold down Shift, and then constrain it straight back. We're doing kind of a non-uniform scale. I'm going to turn off perspective. You're going to see I don't like using Z Modeler in perspective because it kind of throws off finding that surface normal. So I'm going to turn perspective off, hold down shift, and now it's rock solid. So I'm going to hold down shift, non-uniformly scale it using my move brush, and just using that outside one here. And now that those are smaller, I'm going to go into my, back to my Z modeler brush, go back into my draw. So hit Q to go into draw, and then go into your Z modeler brush, so B, Z, M. Hover over a face, Q mesh, a single poly, pull that back, and you're going to see it just going to snap through to that other polygon you had on the other side. And there you go. You can continue to make this bigger or smaller. You can just tap to find that surface normal, hold down shift. You can make it thinner, thicker. You can also control that in your in insert mesh properties, which we'll get to. So I'm going to hold down shift and snap it to the side, turn perspective off, and hit B. And we're going to go ahead and append this to our original insert mesh brush. I'm going to tap that insert mesh brush, hit B, go create insert mesh. We're going to append it to that one. Hit OK. We can skip this note till start. Basically what that's saying is when you have an insert mesh brush selected that has multiple items appended to it, if you hit the M key, you're going to see you have some options in here. We have our original cylinder and we have our new square buckle piece here. So now we can go through here, go back to our original model here, um, alt tap this one here then hit M, make sure the square is selected, then you can just drag out that square. If you want to make that square thinner, you can drop your Z intensity down and it'll make a very thin square. Um, if you crank it up to 100 and it's not quite as thick as you want, go in here to your brush menu, which I have docked over on this side. So you, see you can open these little docking menus here, grab your brush menu, grab that little white dot thing. You can hit R if this is getting a little bit crowded up here. These are just recently used brushes go into modifiers and then under the strength multiplier you can crank that up and then it'll make a very very thick cube. Uh, we'll just go ahead and set that back to one, enter, and then we have our insert mesh brush selected. You can go ahead and drag that out, hit R to go into rotate mode here, and then again you can go in here to subtool split unmasked points, alt tap it to get, grab it again, hit W, and now I can do control shift and move and it'll just pull off a copy, hold down control shift, move one over to this side, hit R to rotate, and you can just very quickly move off copies and rotate them. Hit W, control shift, and move off more buckle copies if you'd like. 